All right, guys, welcome back to Ralph's house. Still pulling our picture, developing our picture, moving things into the foreground a little bit. Uh, we're going to work on this field right here and across these ridges and kind of separate them from the mountain in the background, catch some light pastures that might have been out there. Because this was in that little, ag little farming city, agricultural city back then. Uh, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Let's catch a little bit of a, just our raw sienna. You know, let's get some pastures going in here. Kind of help them establish where that ground is. Where that's kind of the tops of these missionary ridge a little bit. I don't want to lose all my colors that are there, but let's get some a little bit different, get some sunlight colors on parts of these ridges. And help just establish some of this. And A little bit of that color back in here where they where the farming might have been done way back in there in the back a little bit. We're gonna grab a little more of that down here right to for the mountain. And just about having those dark colors how it just that's the row of trees now that grows along beside the river bank. Something to paint into. So we've had that tree line right there. There's probably a field right in there. We're just now, it's looking down on this, so that's what he's seeing. All the agriculture, all the lands, lay out there. It's just amazing how these colors just kind of work. Get a little bit back in there, tone that down a little bit. Side of those ridges, the side that's turned towards the light. See, just uh, so we got that other color that's in there with it. See how it just kind of pick that up a little bit. I hadn't jumped to a small brush yet, and I do a lot with big brushes to cover a lot of area. We're not hadn't done detail work yet. We're just putting paint on a canvas. Figure out where we want things kind of to be. And see so how you can just kind of smooth that thing along like you're pushing the like you ever pushed a slug through the grass. <laughs> you gotta be from the country to, to answer that one. But uh that's the way they kind of move. See how they just kind of move along there like he's pushing that old slug through the grass. See? But it creates a little, a little way back there mountain color. See? Or it does to me. There's the sunshine. Oh, right there. Jump down, hit right on that mountain. See, just push them on down. There's the sunshine hitting right there and pushing on down. Okay, on down. We're just making little ridges, putting color in there. Again, something to paint into. We got these trees are right down here on the bend of the river. Now, this is just the raw sin. That's all I'm doing. Still drawing. So that horse rump's dark, but it has some white trees right down here, right on the bend of that river. See, and a little bit's going to that color's going out to the river itself. That tree line that kind of winds up that river. Probably this field going out through there. So but it has some cornfields out there on that. This is light that's going to be dark, but carry a little bit of light over here at this mountain on this side where the sun's kind of hitting on a little bit. Pull it into those other colors that we'd already painted on there. We want that sun to be coming through this pass and hitting on this town here. That's what we're after. We're just trying to gain some effect there. So we got that little bit dark there, which means that the sun can get right to that little pass right there and shine down on the valley. So when you're painting, tell yourself what you're seeing and try to put it on there. And see how how little we put on at a time and build it and build it and build it to build this. That's part of what makes it work. We're not having to jump a whole lot real quick. And I'm going to grab some of uh, this burnt sienna. I don't use a lot of red either. I mean, burnt sienna is a red, but I don't use a whole lot of red like cadmium red or bright red unless I'm doing a cloth or a material or a fabric. It's going to need that to jump out, which we might get some of that on that flag. 
but this color is a great glazing color to give you some color into things. And, but yeah, just gives you some, uh, besides just the being the color we did there, we'll pick up again a little, little more of that red in there. So we'll just add some color into those fields, say. Put some color into the picture. And we'll tone that down just a little bit, but I want some of that good old, you ever heard of old Georgia red clay? So we'll get some of that color in there. Just a little bit back here in the back. Don't be afraid to put colors in your pictures. Put it in there. Well, these trees are those oak trees. And, uh, this battle actually was fought in uh, November, so there wouldn't have been any leaves on the trees. Kind of lose some of those strokes there. Get some of that good color over in here on this side. And I guess y'all have noticed by now, I'm not afraid to paint over what I drew because we done drew it once. We know where it's at. So don't be afraid to put paint on your canvas. If you paint up to the edge of something and stop, it looks like a, a little cutout or something. We know there's going to be a flag standing up right there. So we're not worried about that. Just blend those colors together. And I can get my fields to be more of what I want. Grab that yellow ochre. Or raw sienna, sorry. Now I put my tree lines and stuff in. These fields are going to jump out there. Top of those ridges where the sunlight's hitting on them. Make some tree shapes. And coming through this valley. And we'll step back and see what we got and what we've done to all this. What we ended up with. And where we need to tone it down. I'll tell you what. Because the next color we got is going to change the whole looks again. Y'all come. 